member who attended. But uh, again, I would just refer to those lists to double check my statement. I mean, just, just your own personal opinion. Do you feel that the public is a stakeholder in this intelligent transportation system? Anybody who uses the transportation network is a stakeholder in this. Was the public welcome to these meetings? Yes. Yep. And no one showed up from any of the towns? No, much like most of our, our meetings. <laughs> um, unfortunately, there isn't a great uh, <coughs> general public uh, involvement. What about the other uh, RPCs and POs? Did anybody show up at any of those working group meetings? Uh, again, I would refer to the to the list. I do not know off the top of my head. Okay. I think we had shared working group meetings for this document anyway. I don't think we can speak to the process that other MPOs use. Uh, that would be Southern New Hampshire and Nashua, New Hampshire. We were involved in their process. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Dan? I guess at this point, we're looking for a motion to adopt the, this. Uh yes, the, the ITS architecture, Ar the strategic plan, and the final report. So three, three documents. Okay. If I can ask a question, okay. and then I'll, I might be prepared to make a motion. Dan, in one of the things you talked about is the recommendation, sort of a best management practice, I guess, that this be sort of reviewed pretty thoroughly once every four years or so. Mm -hmm. And then you've also you also talked about um, having kind of an ongoing or interim group or something that yes. kind of take a look at things. And I guess my sense is is that with the changes in technology and all the rest happening so rapidly, um, is the the I'd like a little bit more discussion about the whether or not it makes sense to set up a group on an, on an ongoing basis that can come back with an annual report or a yearly recommendation or something um, saying that you know there have been changes in this area and that area is that a, is that a sort of a best management practices thing as well is that if we adopt this does that automatically happen or do we need to do that separately or how does that be yeah I think that's a it's a separate discussion so any any um approval or disapproval of the documents won't, won't uh, affect that. That's that's something separate that we can decide upon you know, either right now or at a future meeting. But I think as, as staff sees it, I think that would be a great way to approach it where we say maybe staff puts together a, a list of completed projects um, or additional needs that might have, have risen and then we get some volunteers in the, uh, who are interested to come to a ITS coordination meeting and maybe see if there are any additional needs or any other systems that might have been put in place. I think that's a, a good way to go about it rather than waiting four years and um, doing this very robust uh, update. I think keeping it up to date incrementally is, uh, personally, I think that's uh, a better way to go about it. I was also just going to mention that it probably would be helpful because the state has to update their ITS plan and we're really you know, intimately bound to that idea, the statewide ITS architecture and strategic plan. So, you know, I'm guessing throughout this period, this four year period, that the state will probably update theirs and, and we can talk about the ways that, share the ways that it's, that maybe changes our direction of our next update for the ITS. Maybe we can, you know, make some recommendations that year to kind of, just recognize the changes that you know may come about over that four-year period. Okay, so I guess I'm I'm prepared to make a motion that we. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I just I think having the, an ongoing committee would be a great way to get more public input. If there's concern that there's not enough, uh, you know, feedback on projects and how they're going and how they can be improved. So. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a motion. I'm going to be following this with another motion that talks about that issue, but my motion, at least at the moment, is to adopt the plans as presented. Second. Oh, if I can. Discussion. Second. Discussion? Yes. Our handbook that I got when I first started as commissioner states that anything we do here are actions that will foster sustainable development and improve the quality of life in the region. It goes on to say sustainable development balances economic progress with environmental protection and community well-being. 
Brookfield will has to vote no for this. And the reason is because this is financially unsustainable. Our, the U.S. debt just exceeded 100% GDP. Where is this money coming from? And I think since no people from the public show up at these meetings, is basically a no vote. Because people are basically disgusted with the spending of this money. That's, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just, I, I'm going to respond. And I, I think the fact that nobody showed up is a yes vote. Um, I, well, it's a combination of two things. One is people are very busy in their lives, and they tend to get involved when they see some sort of a direct impact. Um, people also tend to get involved if they see something that they're not happy with or upset about. Um, and so I, I do think, I agree with that, that there needs to be additional um, information out there and the ability to have public input. But all we can do is provide the opportunity if people decide for a lot of different reasons. If they don't want to attend, that's their decision. We can't make them be there. So, um, so I, 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 I do think I, I agree with, with the, with Ed's belief that we need to have more public input. I don't necessarily agree with his conclusion um, in terms of not having public input. What that means. Thank you. Ed, discussion. I, don't, I hear no response to that. This is not financially sustainable. There's no response. And most likely, each one of you are going to vote yes for this, but never a response about how it's going to get paid for. Could you be more specific? If the federal debt is 100% GDP, how are we paying for all of this structure, the, the ITS structure? Nobody has an answer. I believe, Bro I can only speak for Brookfield. Brookfield states that we should be spending money on infrastructure like bridges and stuff that needs to be repaired, existing projects, and there's extra projects on here, the ITS, bike routes, etc. And Brookfield doesn't agree on spending this money. And the fact that no one shows up at these meetings, how can we go forward and say okay to this architecture when there's no involvement? I see only cities and towns, but I see all these other stakeholders, and I, I mean this with the utmost respect, most of this list seems like a feeding at the trough. I asked my, uh, right here, it says cities and towns, police chiefs. My police chief doesn't even know this exists. Whose fault is that? That's not this board's fault. You're the rep from Brookfield. Why haven't you told him? Our, our, I asked him, I said, do you know, do you know the ESF? No, he doesn't know anything about it. Did you it. tell him it was coming up? Did you tell him the stakeholder meetings were going on? Was anything done by this commission to, to obviously, no, if no one showed up at the public meetings, obviously there's, there's no... I, I can't go knock on every single door. Jeremy. Uh, in response to the financial question that has been raised, uh, could you clarify that the ITS architecture does or does not identify projects that are already planned for? Yes, it does. So a lot of the time, uh, in, in many cases, take what's going on with the, the Little Bay Bridge uh, project. This document would identify systems that could be put in place as part of that larger project. So what's identified here in most cases aren't standalone projects. They are subsets of projects that are already planned for uh, where you know, fiscal constraint analysis has already, already been determined uh, that we do have enough revenue uh, to pay for these uh, costs. So yes. So when, if, if, to add on to that, um, when you're asking about, you believe that our priorities should be on bridge and roads, maintenance and, and replacement. But what has happened is that these systems have been incorporated into the road design and the bridge design, and it's part of the process already incorporated in the cost. So they're already in these projects and so when you see that replacement of a bridge, it could have ITS systems within it. And I think Glenn could speak a little more because DOT has done a superb job of layering the ITS into um, all of the project design and construction. Right, I think the big picture, uh, <coughs> at least in public, but th these are recommendations for projects for ITS. And as projects come up, in our 10-year plan, or we see projects being needed, um, we can see where recommendations are made, and we can address those recommendations in 
the design plans. As we put projects out there, we always go to public uh, hearings and meetings. The public is there. They say, no, this we don't agree with this. They don't have to go forward. The public's there and they say yes, then it, will, it gets included in the project, it gets included in the cost, and it gets added to the system. So the architecture make sure if we do put things in place, like you talked about, it's there is data exchange, it's assistant technology, it works with the whole entire system. But at, at the point where I you know, agree with your comment is this committee really needs to get involved with it, go back to their talents and get these people involved in these ideas. And it's up to this commission and you know our communication to get this this word out there. You go back and if you heard about it and he has them, we need to get this information to them. And the various public meetings um, on these projects. Again, this group is a great avenue to get that word out to the towns, out to the town people, through you, to the town officials, to the town, to get people at those meetings and voice their opinions. If we just walk out of here and don't say anything, and numb, we're not doing our job either. So I it's up to all of us to make sure public is getting involved. And that's one of the issues we've always had, is trying to get as much public involvement in these projects. Um, it's a hard thing to do. People are busy. And I do agree um, the statement that, you know, I know DOT, we don't hear from the public, we must be doing a good job because when we don't, we hear pretty loud, <laughs> <laughs> real clear. <laughs> but you know, I, um, as far as having a good ITS system, it's it's economically efficient. It's uh, so it's, it's actually if traffic is running running well, it's good for good for the economy. It's also safer for people. So there's some real benefits to this. This is basically making things run better. If we didn't think there was a benefit to it, the, probably the federal government wouldn't put this forward. But again, if it's, we go to the public meetings, we don't think it's a need at that time or in the future, then it probably wouldn't happen. But it's up to the public to tell us that. Ted? Would we get the federal funding for ITS if we didn't agree to put it in our plan? We wouldn't get the funding. We wouldn't get the funding in. Who, who's funding ITS? Surface Transportation Authority. This is how we recent uh, passage by uh, Congress of the Surface Transportation Bill, and that funds the ITS programs. Can you explain a little bit? <coughs> Cynthia? I'm s I can't quite hear you. The, the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act that was recently passed by Congress. That funds the ITS programs? Yes. I, yes. I don't know where within the new um, map 21 it specifically is, where DOTs, state DOTs and the NPOs are all waiting for federal highways and federal transit to provide us with oversight. And so those are just being released this week. And I think we have the linkage there. And I personally haven't had time to read through and understand where all the programs are now located, but the ITS is in the new reauthorization. Those are the provisions that you're talking about. Yes. yes. The answer question is mostly it's federal money that's uh, a share of federal money goes into paying for this. They set aside certain money typically to fund these type of projects. At this point, Map 21, we haven't got that far. I still do not hear any comments about, about financial sustainability why is that are you saying that this is financially viable I heard that it's uh, it's going to help safety and make the economy more efficient etc but I hate to use this this uh, idea but if you don't have the money to do something you can't do it and the public is asking how are you spending this money I'm only speaking for Brookfield because that's the only people the people I can represent but I keep hearing that I'm talking about the public. I'm done with that conversation. It's obviously there was not enough public comment. I want to know about what people feel about this, the financial sustainability of all these programs. Just the ITS. If I can just ask one final question on the, the financial sustainability point. I guess what I was trying to get at earlier was, I think there's, it seems to me there's a lot of confusion that ITS is a whole separate slate of projects and it's not. ITS is a way for us to identify components of other projects that are going to be funded under the surface transportation funding anyway. You know, I mean, there, there's certain some projects that are solely ITS that 
you know, like especially for coast it may not necessarily appear in the 10-year plan but these are projects that are going to come out of the funding that's allocated for coast through the FTA or whatever other programs anyway the idea of ITS and that's what I'm looking for is confirmation the idea of ITS is really to identify okay if we have projects that have these components in them let's make sure they network so we don't have to fund them again separately to fix it later and this is not a separate slate of projects and funding it's not a separate funding mechanism it's just you know okay we're, we're now doing things that we've always done in terms of building road and infrastructure but now they have technological components let's make sure those work well is That's that correct. accurate? Yes. And I think to include, to be able to include the ITS components into projects, you need to have the architecture in place to justify it, to show that you put some forethought into those projects and you know that they're going to be consistent with the other ITS To receive system. federal funding for those, they can certainly be paid for with local funds too if the, a local community or a private agency wants to pay for them, but to get to receive federal funding for these systems, it needs to go through this coordination effort in order to maximize that investment across boundaries. This, this might be duplicative or, or cumulative. It's my understanding we're not voting today to spend money. We're voting today to create a framework uh, that the national agencies can look at um, uh, for input as input from local communities and, and regional organizations in their determination of what projects to fund. Um, and that's one of the reasons for an annual review that Ken and people were talking about is national people at national level may decide it's not sustainable for a certain project and they aren't going to fund it. We have to come back and recalculate what the priorities are and, and change the, the uh, timelines um, on a regular basis to reflect that. But the decision to spend is either going to be made by the DOT through funds that they have or, or nationally or down of Brookfield gets the vote on whether or not they're going to participate or they're going to have a particular project. If they say no, then we have to go back to the drawing board. But we today we're asking to have the, the planning process in existence that all of that can be done over the next whatever, said, 10 years. Or That's right. So it's not we're not voting to expend money today that may or may not be there. That's not our concern at this point. Question? Sure. I'd like to move the oh, question. Okay. There's no more uh, questions. I'm going to. There's a motion that's been made and seconded uh, to uh, adopt the ITS systems architecture and plan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One of opposition. That's it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a, a follow up motion. Sure. And I would, I would like to. Um, in, in anticipation of that motion, I just would like to make a comment. And I, um, one of the things that's frustrating to me is we, we have this list of invited stakeholders, um, and I, all of us look at these lists in different ways. Um, and um, Ed sort of referred to that kind of be a list of folks who are feeding the trough. Um, and frankly, it, I, that insults me, and, and I take umbrage at that because. Um, I, I'm a planner. I happen to be a planner in the city of Rochester. My job is to look at planning in ways that are good for people in my community. Um, there's nothing here that I'm voting on that's going to help, uh, that's going to somehow feather my nest or do something better for me. These are things that are better for the people in my community that I work for. And frankly, um, the my interaction with members of the Regional Planning Commission representing their communities, they're representing their people. Same thing with the Rocking and Planning, Cent Central. Um, you go down this list, the people in Coast. All of these people, to, 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 to suggest that these are people who, are, who don't have um, the, our constituents, the, the general public, um, best interests at heart, I, I find disingenuous. Now, 
Having said that, having said that, um, I also I do agree that that we struggle to get public participation in a way that's meaningful, um, and. I think we need to do everything we possibly can uh, to provide opportunity for public input. And so my motion is going to be that we do, that, that, that staff um, does a couple of things. One is it, it, that we put on our agenda for our next meeting, and that we set up a structure for um, an ongoing, what, what's the, what phrase should I use in terms of the? ITS Coordination Committee. ITS Coordination Committee um, that meets at a minimum once a year, uh, more frequently, that that committee have the task or responsibility of reporting back to the MPO once a year. So it's not just a matter of meeting and then not doing anything. I want to I want to report back. Um, I would also like that group to have um, some sort of a link on our website so that if the general public happens to notice something on. March 22nd, and they want to say something about it, there's a way for them to go on to our website and make comments. So it's not a matter of having to remember whatever that is and then pay attention to when a meeting might be. And so I want to make sure we take advantage of sort of the electronic um, uh, and social media um, opportunities, and maybe that's a Twitter thing or I don't know. But some way to make sure that on an ongoing basis, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, if people want to have input, that they can have input. Um, so, so my motion is to ask staff to look at the, a way of having the electronic opportunity for input anytime, and number two, to um, set up the structure. Now again, if we set up the structure and nobody's willing to volunteer, that's all we can do. But So, that, so my motion is set up the structure and set up the, the electronic as well as the, the group. There a second? I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> second of my end. And, and I have. Can I comment too? Oh, sure. As a city planner, are all city planners elected officials? No. No. Are you elected? No. no. Well, how do you represent the people if you're not elected? Because I'm appointed by the city manager, who's appointed by the elected governing body of the city of Rochester, and if and so. It's the same way as you, you've got the directly, in, in communities you have directly elected people, and then you have people who work for those directly elected people. And that is the mechanism in our society. A small community like Brookfield has, has fewer layers in between. A larger community like Rochester has more layers in between. But in the end, um, my direction and my responsibilities are set by the governing body who's elected by the public. Is there a method to unelect you or remove you or remove anybody that's not elected? Yes. Oh, yeah. I can be fired. If I'm not doing my job, uh, my immediate supervisor, my boss can fire me, and as long as there's just cause, and I'm gone. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to have to talk against Ken's motion. Um, I just don't see any real honest value in yet another group and looking for more volunteers. I have been sitting here for a year or two at this point. This is the first time in quite a while I've seen outs outside public members participating in this group. Uh, this idea that we're going to have more volunteers, another coordinating committee, opening up a link, making it available and asking the staff to look at ways to better advertise is fine. Creating yet another group, another layer, another committee, another, another body of volunteers. Uh, let me ask if anybody from Rochester knows, what's our voter turnout usually, 13%? 18% well, on a city election, but 45% on a on national, national, national yeah. state. My point is yeah, the public does have the opportunity and I'm not willing to accept blame as part of this commission for not allowing the public or, ha or the public not showing up. I'm tired of hearing that. When I sit at my other meetings in Rochester, I can almost name the people who are going to show up at the meeting, and I would say they represent less than one-tenth of percent of the population. So this wonderful idea of let's create another group, and another committee, and another layer sits very poorly with me. Thank you. 
Robbie? Um, philosophy aside, I think the keeping the ITS plan up to date on a regular basis with some representation from the local stakeholders is really important to me. Uh, and I, I hate to sound like the whiny younger brother that I am, but uh, <laughs> you know, public transit is often one of the last things that is considered with any road project, especially in New Hampshire, and it's certainly gotten a lot better thanks to a lot of really great people around the state, but, you know, we, this all came about right, you know, the, the current update all came about right at a time when Dover was about to do signal coordination and had not said anything to Coast, even though we talked to all of their staff on a weekly basis and, and uh, caused a little bit of unnecessary heartache, and the ITS strategic plan and architecture and all that package is really a method to uh, do away with those heartache issues and really get to the, the point where we're working cooperatively together uh, on some really important stuff and transit certainly has a lot of uh, impact in terms of uh, the road network at every level so I think having a committee to keep this you know going over the course of a couple of years instead of only revisiting it every four years where we didn't get enough representation despite the best efforts of the consultants and the planning commissions, um, I think that'll help us get people to start understanding what this is really about. Um, it's going to take more than a once every four years kind of <laughs> blitz of, of meetings. And unfortunately, we're, I think, really well run. You know, kudos to you guys and the, uh, and the consultant. The meetings were really well run, but it was sort of like a, okay, well, we're going to have a meeting as frequently as possible and try to get everybody involved. And, you know, it just doesn't always work. We're, we're all very busy. Um, and so we couldn't always get as many people there, even from the direct stakeholder list, much less the public. Um, I think the committee will help a lot, so I, I have to support at least that part. Bob, real quick, I'm again tasking the staff here to review it regularly doesn't require a committee. And I have, I, I did not make clear, I fully support either a quarterly or an annual review as a normal task of this this commission staff but I do I, I just want to make that clear this is, now we have three separate issues if you will so I'm not disagreeing with the need but do we really need a, is that something this staff should be doing regularly should they be reporting regularly I think that's the larger question than how it's done I don't think it has to be a really big deal I think it's a, a yearly meeting I, I would I would welcome it having this opportunity to get the highway committee in Northwood the opportunity to have input on something that regarding IT it's just it's just an opportunity to get that kind of input, to get people excited mr. Orman would you consider changing your motion well if um, if, if my second doesn't mind I don't I don't have a problem breaking the motion into pieces so that people can vote in favor or against different pieces. Do you have any objection to that? Well, I would say it could be changed to, why don't we ask the staff if they feel that it would be a hardship to have a small meeting once a year? Staff? I would say no. That is not a, a hardship. How so staff voting it as opposed to a, a separate committee of this group? I don't see why not. Okay. So how, um, so how did I phrase <laughs> <laughs> so, so originally I talked about setting up this committee and I think my second is agreeing that if we phrase it that we're asking for staff to conduct a periodic review, formal review with public input with, yes. with, with public input okay so that yeah. rather than creating a new committee we're asking staff on a, on a regular basis not less frequently than annually Okay with you. Well, I'd like to have it once a week. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if I could gather, if I can gather 150 people for a week, that would be a hardship. <laughs> that would be a hardship. I, I just would even even have suggest. Have, yeah. Nice try, Ed. Quarterly. <laughs> Again, I, I understand the need. I just don't see claims that we're going to get different people all of a sudden, and we're going to create another entity. It does us any good? Well, we don't. Sorry. Okay, so not let's say not less frequently than annually, but but maybe we start out quarterly and see what kind of response. And if there's a decent response, then we continue quarterly. If it's, there's not a decent response, maybe go to semi-annually and try back to quarterly every once in a while. 
I mean, I don't see any reason to 